the oxides of nitrogen okay so what do we mean by oxide an oxide is simply a compound that contains oxygen and another element now in the case of nitrogen nitrogen has three oxides we have nitrogen one oxide nitrogen two oxide and nitrogen four oxide now their chemical formulae are as follows now in case you're wondering why are we having nitrogen 1, 2, and 4? The reason for this is because nitrogen is an element that can actually have multiple oxidation states. So, for example, in the first compound, it has an oxidation number of 1, in the second 2, in the third 4. Now, how are we getting the formulae? Nitrogen, in this case, has a valency of 1. Oxygen, of course, in most cases, has a valency of 2. Now, when this switch, you end up having the chemical formula of N2O. In the case of nitrogen 2 oxide, nitrogen has a valency of 2, oxygen of course also 2. These cancel one another and you end up having NO. Now in our lesson today, what we're going to do is we are going to introduce the three oxides, discuss how they can be prepared in the lab, what their physical properties are, and of course the climax, their chemical properties. So let's dive into it. Now if you want to prepare nitrogen 1 oxide, this is a simple process. All you need to have is number one, ammonium nitrate, and number two, a source of heat, and you are done. So what happens is that ammonium nitrate decomposes on heating to form nitrogen one oxide and steam, as shown by the chemical equation. Now guys, let's pause over here. In my previous video, I discussed nitrogen gas and how to prepare it in the lab. Now, if you want to prepare nitrogen gas in the lab, you need ammonium nitrite. But if you want to prepare nitrogen 1 oxide, you need ammonium nitrate. I hope that lessens the confusion. Now going back to nitrogen 1 oxide, once the gas has been formed, it can be collected through the overwater method. And the reason for this is because the gas is slightly soluble in warm water. Look at that, warm water. Now nitrogen 1 oxide is very unique in its solubility in water. It is fairly soluble in cold water, but less so in hot water. Now, what do we mean by this? Cold water simply refers to water at room temperature. I do not mean cold freezing water. Now, when you take nitrogen 1 oxide with water at room temperature, it's going to dissolve in it. So instead of you having a gas at the end, you will simply have a solution. So this cannot happen. And therefore, warm water is used because nitrogen one oxide is only slightly soluble in warm water how amazing is this now nitrogen one oxide can also be collected by downward delivery and the reason for this is because it's denser than air so if you want to collect dry nitrogen one oxide then you can pass it through concentrated sulfuric six acid in a conical flask on to the physical properties of nitrogen one oxide it's a colorless gas it has a pleasant smell. It's fairly soluble in cold water, but only slightly soluble in warm water. And that is the reason why it's collected over warm water. It's denser than air and thus can also be collected by downward delivery. Now, what are the chemical properties of nitrogen 1 oxide? Number one, combustion. No, it does not burn. Neither does it support combustion. I want to say this. If you were to introduce a glowing splint into a gas jar containing nitrogen 1 oxide, what will happen is that the glowing splint will relight. Now, this does not mean that it supports combustion. It doesn't. This simply means that the heat from the glowing splint causes the nitrogen 1 oxide to dissociate, forming oxygen and nitrogen. So, it's actually the oxygen gas that relights the glowing splint. Now, this is a confirmatory test for nitrogen 1 oxide. The difference between nitrogen 1 oxide and oxygen is the smell. Oxygen is odorless, while nitrogen 1 oxide has a pleasant smell. Moving on, does it have any effect on a moist litmus paper? No. And the reason for this is because it's a neutral gas. Oxidizing properties of nitrogen 1 oxide. Now, nitrogen 1 oxide can act as an oxidizing agent. And the reason for this is because if you introduce a burning substance into a jar containing nitrogen 1 oxide, the heat causes the nitrogen 1 oxide to decompose into oxygen and nitrogen. 
So the oxygen is then taken up by the burning substance to form an oxide. And that is the reason why it can act as an oxidizing agent. Now let's give an example of magnesium. If you have burning magnesium and place it in a jar containing nitrogen 1 oxide, it's going to continue burning with a bright white flame forming magnesium oxide which is a white solid. Another example, when you pass nitrogen 1 oxide over heated copper, a black residue of copper 2 oxide is formed. Okay, let's break it down. So, copper and nitrogen 1 oxide. So, the heat causes the nitrogen 1 oxide to decompose into nitrogen gas and oxygen gas. Copper then reacts with the oxygen gas to form copper 2 oxide, which is black in color. Nitrogen gas, of course, is just simply given off. So this is also a redox reaction. You're going to have the copper metal being oxidized to copper 2 oxide and nitrogen 1 oxide being reduced to nitrogen gas. Our last example is sulfur. So if you were to burn sulfur, place it in a jar containing nitrogen 1 oxide, it will continue to burn brilliantly, forming sulfur 4 oxide and nitrogen gas. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is nitrogen 1 oxide.